Thanksgiving in two days. I have a lot to do that I have not done. <laughs> Nothing like the last minute for me. How about your prep? I have none. Like I, our family does things ideally. And one, we thought we were having two separate Thanksgivings because my sister's family all came down from COVID, but it was outside the window of whatever. So their 10 days are over. We're all going to be together. They bought all the groceries. They also bought all the groceries over here, but everybody has their own dish. So when I get there, I'll make the potato dumplings and I will make the turkey. Mom will well, make I like the that. Where everyone we'll just make... makes yep. their own thing when they're there. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. That's fun. Yeah. It is. It's great. All right. All right. So before the holiday season, let's talk about why your financial statements are useless, which I thought was a really funny title. So tell us why they're useless. Okay. So this is the time of year where people are like, I haven't touched my books all year. Like I've done nothing. Blah, blah, blah. And there's one, there's, this is part of the symptom of your financial statements being useless. If your financial statements were so useful and so informative, you would not go 10 months without doing your books. But here's the truth. Doing all of that is for compliance. It's for the tax guy. Like when is the last time you looked at your income statement and was like, oh, wow. That's a surprise. <laughs> never. True. Yeah. Never. Right. So for small businesses, when it comes time to like to, to doing your books and using your financial statements and stuff like that, it's kind of like a nice to have like a, a temperature check. But it's not one of these things that we're going to lean on heavily and start making decisions because all of these things that we learn from our income statement. And here's the thing. I bet 95%, 98% of the balance sheets that I look at with new clients are wrong. Oh, yeah. And I love oh, Cece. Cece just wrote, never. Like, she's never looked at her financial statements. And I love the honesty because you know what? Um, yeah, I, I look at them now, but I still, as a business coach, yeah, I look at them, but I still go, this is useless to me. Let me go to my bank account. <laughs> like, let me ding, 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 ding. Okay. So here's the thing. When you are a small business and you don't have teams that are responsible for certain sections of the income statement, right? That's when your income statement is useful. When you have departments that have responsibilities and you want to see how everything is running efficiently and where you can find more efficiencies, great. Your income statement is awesome for that. When you're a really big company and you want to know like what you, what the equity is and what value is worth, what you can sell it for, what you can leverage, what you can get loans on to do other things, then your balance sheet becomes useless. But your income statement isn't really useless until you, you have departments. Your balance sheet isn't really useless or useful, useful oh, right. until you are a big company and looking to leverage the assets that you have. Okay? Yes. So there's no surprises. It's probably wrong or incomplete anyway. Oh, yeah. Everything's categorized wrong at times. And to get it clean, it's like a nightmare. So I do keep up on it better than I ever have before, thanks to you. But before that, as I grow, it's becoming more important to me, like you said, because I have people now who are in charge of making sure certain things. But before yeah. that, it was like, what's in my bank account? Period. Yeah. What's in my bank account, right? And when does that number ever match the bottom line on the bottom of the pan of the income statement. Never. It doesn't. Never. That's because profit is like a theory. It's like it's it's like moving things around and you can shove things in there and make it more profitable or less profitable and accelerate and decelerate. Or... Cash. Cash is what matters in your business right now, right? Mm -hmm. So even if your income statement and balance sheet are right, they still don't help you identify the problems. They're not there for you. They are there for compliance to pay the proper amount of taxes and blah, 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 and make it look like you have your poop in a group. Right. It's for the IRS when it comes time, when they come knocking on your door. Exactly. Exactly. That is what it is for. And that's why it is so painful for so many people to sit down and do their books. Right. Now, there is definitely <laughs> reasons that you do need to do them. Like, for instance, if you are invoicing your clients through, you want to make sure that you, you're invoicing everybody. You want to make sure that everybody's paying you timely and blah, 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 blah. Right. But that's not your financial statements. That's just having your poop in a group. Right. Okay. Your financial statements, historical. What is super, super important, and you nailed it on the head, what is super important for small businesses, for solopreneurs, for people with five or fewer employees and no, no departments, is your future cash flow. 
That's what matters. And That's you can start to right. figure that out by looking at your financial statements. Yes. If your financial statements yes. are clean, meaning your QuickBooks or your zero or whatever you use, or if you're still manual is clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do that even without them being clean. I mean, there are ways that you can shove everything into a pivot table in Excel and, and work it out. Right. Like it, you you don't, in order to sleep at night, you don't have to have every clean, everything clean and pristine in QuickBooks. It certainly makes your life easier. Yes. As you grow down the road. It makes your accountant's life easier. Your bill for getting your taxes prepared is going to be far lower if you have that stuff done. That is so true. Repeat that sentence because people get so upset their accountants are charging so much, but they're not doing their end of the bargain, which is keeping things clean. So their accountants have to do like 15 hours or more of cleanup every time they just sit down to do someone's taxes, which is why it's costing you so much. Right, right. And there are things to be said, like there are errors that you can find if you're doing it consistently, right? So it's like, like this cost benefit analysis thing. Are you going to are you going to spend the, those hours per month or are you going to pay somebody to spend those hours per month doing your books so you can use them and so you could have a lower tax bill at the end of the year when you hand off like the tax prep bill or is like is going to be able to see the future going to help you sleep at night. And those two things definitely go in hand in hand. But the thing that drives me so crazy out there is that we have coaches all over the place that are saying, know your numbers. And they, they themselves don't even know what they're talking about when they're saying, know your numbers. Knowing your numbers means you know that what job your money has, you know where it's going before it comes in, you know what levers to pull in order to accelerate revenue or to um, slow down expenses. Those that's, that's what know your numbers means. Know your numbers does not mean having your income state memorized for the past three years or know exactly what your balance sheet says. No, know so, your numbers for me when I'm working in my um, with my profit insiders groups and my one-on-ones. How much money did you bring in this month? What was your net percent of profitability on each individual job? How does that then roll into your operating expenses subtracted out? Like, what are you what are you making every month? Like, knowing your numbers like that, I'm rarely saying pull up your balance sheet and pull up your income statement. Rarely. Sometimes right. I have to. Um, but yeah. but yeah, it's more about understanding your cash flow and your numbers for each individual job you do, that then will roll up to a profitable company if every single job is profitable, right? So yeah. yeah. Yes. And Absolutely. expenses are kept low. So we always look at expenses. My clients laugh at me. I literally get messages like, you told me I wasn't allowed to spend any money without checking with you. So I saw this thing and it looks really good. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you can't buy that right now. You know, like, because I know you chase shiny objects, right? Different personalities for different things. But I want yeah. to see what CC is saying. My daughter logs receipts, invoices, and purchases. I guess I'm sort of doing good. That is, that is actually better than many people who come to me. How about the people who come to you, Megan? Yeah, I usually I get people that are very sheepish. They're like, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm like, there's no judgment. Exactly. Because I know how hard it is to keep on something that is so useless when your time is so much better spent elsewhere. So I get a whole lot of like, I'm so sorry, this is in terrible condition. Like, I know I get that too. I don't know what I made last year. I don't know what my run rate is for this year. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can figure it out. Then we go to the books and we go, yeah, we can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> at that point i'm like let's just get all your data let's we're going to do one giant download out of your bank account we're going to pull it into excel and we're going to do this really quick and dirty and it's going to be close enough close enough we don't need to find every penny in every day right right and i think that's what hangs up a lot of people is that 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 accountant mindset which i totally get and there's a value to it but you know everything has to box to the penny Right. Even for interior oh designers gosh. who I coach primarily, it's like the shipping and the delivery and the storage. Well, how do I get it to the penny? How about we just do I an estimate? A box like that. We're running a $12 million business and you really want me to go find that nickel? Exactly. Really? Exactly. Really? Yeah. It's crazy. So good enough is sometimes the best you can get to at any certain point in time. And that's okay for the for what we're talking totally about. Totally okay. Give yourself a break. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a break. That should have been the title of give yourself a break. <laughs> your financial statements are useless, <laughs> but your accountant does want them and need them to report to the government. So we do have to do them still. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's an extra credit tip real quick, real okay. quick. Extra credit tip. If you're hiring out your taxes to be done, make sure that they're looking at your balance sheet as well. I've run into a couple clients where they do income statement only and they miss a lot of stuff because they refuse to look at the balance sheet and be really? like, oh, there's assets on there to depreciate. Mer. Oh, really? Well, that would be disappointing yeah. if my accountant missed that. Just quick tip. Make sure they're looking at your balance sheet. So too. ask them if they're looking at your balance sheet also. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else we did not cover? Whew. It's always a time. I'm all fired up today. I know you are all fired up. <laughs> you got to work, work it off for that future meal you're having in two days. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I love that you approach things from a standpoint of it's not going to be perfect. Right. Because I think that's what locks up so many people working with a virtual CFO like you or working with a business coach like me. It's like they think we're going to hold their feet to the fire like it has to be perfect, perfect, perfect. And you and I are actually quite the opposite. We want to get you there making enough money, understanding your profitability. But perfection is not achievable for most people and especially in the short amount of time they're working with us. But we're going right. to get you to know your numbers well enough that you're going to make more money and understand where your money should be spent. So I love it. I love it. And look, Cece loves you too. Look, I like it. Oh, she says, let's go. So, all right. Awesome. All right. So those are your tips. Your financial statements are probably wrong anyway. Even mm -hmm. if they're right, it's not necessarily identifying the problems that you need to be working at as a small business owner. And right. if you're not actually like worrying about compliance and the IRS and stuff, like kind of let your accountant do that part. Yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. Or like perfection is overrated, but get, yeah. it, get it close enough, understand your numbers, but don't kill yourself in doing it. Right, right. Doing your future cash forecast is way more important. Future cash forecast. Okay. I like that too. And you know what? I was looking the other day. I use Stripe. Stripe actually sort of does that for me. Nice. Based on my history, they'll sort of project what's coming. And I thought, <laughs> oh, I never saw that number before, right? So here's one last final little like bonus tip like you. Sometimes when you actually look at the programs you pay for, you find little reports that you never knew existed and you find out a lot of information you never knew you had access to. We buy something, use 20% of its capability and then go buy something that's actually already. <laughs> yeah, just to replace it because we never knew the thing we bought actually did the thing we wanted to do. So yeah, that's yeah. another whole conversation. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone. And thank you, Megan, for being here and have a happy Thanksgiving. If I don't My pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I hope you get to eat lots of dumplings and turkey and Stuffing. No, and I, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat turkey, oh. but I eat all the other stuff. <laughs> Bread. All right. Bye, everyone. Go have a great Tuesday. And I will see you tomorrow, I believe. And uh, Megan and I will see you in a week or so. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.